as smart applications, we partnered with the Kenya Healthcare Federation, looking at how we could be able to enable the healthcare agenda in the country through data-driven decision making. And uh, we are proud to launch uh, this report where we are looking at uh, healthcare statistics uh, gathered from different healthcare facilities uh, on what happened around the month of July uh, in terms of informing how the, um, the civil unrest that we uh, saw in that particular period may have contributed to certain demographics around healthcare. We are passionate about how uh, the country can gain uh, a lot more in terms of precise uh, engagements and initiatives in healthcare through the use of data, through the use of uh, technology, and through the use of uh, empowered engagements with the different actors to achieve uh, the improvement of quality of healthcare. Um, going into this report, which we did jointly with the Kenya Healthcare Federation, when we analyzed uh, the uh, perspective of healthcare access across that period, uh, we noticed that uh, indeed in the month of July uh, there was a drop of about 24.7% uh, in terms of uh, overall uh, utilization uh, amount spent at uh, the sampled healthcare facilities uh, across Kenya. We were able to narrow down this to probably elements uh, that arose from uh, the restricted movements that happened during that period, as well as uh, different elements that prevented uh, access to, at the same levels as has been in previous months. In particular, uh, we saw that there was increased expenditure in terms of access uh, around the Kisumu region with about 26% in terms of increased consultation access and 21% in terms of increased laboratory access. In Mombasa, there was an increase of about 5% in terms of increased medication access and about 5.8% uh, increase in terms of consultation access. Smart enabled solutions working with different stakeholders. And how can this can inform preparedness in case of such eventualities if they sh should happen uh, into the future, including other elements that uh, inform uh, different policies that are being put in place, both by government and private sector, in relation to achieving the healthcare needs or meeting the healthcare needs of our Kenyan population. So, as smart applications, we are proud to have uh, partnered with the Kenya Healthcare Federation, and uh, this shows the undying commitment uh, to work with different stakeholders uh, in uh, addressing and ensuring that the gaps around uh, healthcare accessibility are resolved. The Kenya Healthcare Federation is very, very keen on data driven decision making right across the health sector because if we make decisions that are not informed, then we are very likely to make the wrong decisions. It's highly unlikely that you'll ever make the right decision using the wrong information. If you do, it's luck. And that's why we partnered with SMART, not just on the effect of the, to get data in terms of the effect of the manda mano, but data to inform various other aspects of healthcare delivery. As is current now, we are looking at reforms at NHIF. And one of the key debating points is about the cost of healthcare across the various parts of the country. Without data, that debate could go on for a, a long time, and we still may end up with the wrong decisions. Specifically on, on this particular study, away from the numbers is the human story, which is about people who are ill getting access to the help that they need, and people who work in healthcare facilities getting to the points where they provide service. Both were disrupted to different uh, extents, and the numbers are actually a demonstration of that reality higher procurement cost or shortage of items, workers who cannot uh, access the places where they render service, and those who go to get care, limiting themselves so that only the very sick ones would attempt to negotiate their way on an uncertain day, and therefore you find the cost is higher because those accessing service are, are generally more sick than on a normal day. 
it is important that to the extent that's possible, we find a solution to the 4,000 or so doctors who are currently uh, graduating from schools at a rate higher than our capacity to absorb them because of uh, economic challenges. And one of the solutions that may come from the planned UHC rollout and the planned autonomy to facilities to employ, because there are four bills that are currently going through Parliament and we are contributing to improve them, is that with greater resources being directed directly into the sector, we will be in a better position to absorb the healthcare workers that are right now waiting to be absorbed into the industry.